finally, by the way, we have longer than 45 seconds. We can actually talk to you for Look a bit. Look at this place, though. Uh, it's I nice, right? You. And you brought the sun. Amazing how much Bristol has been built up <laughs> <laughs> in the last few weeks. Uh, don't get me started. Yeah. All right. uh, so, so I, fire beat. I know yeah. this is. I want to talk about the obviously trusting the process. Jalen gets very angry that it was branded when in all reality it's just tanking. Um, but for five seasons they went 109, 301, and now we're talking about Philadelphia as going to the conference finals, maybe even past that. So how do you or how do you handle the fact or what do you tell teams about tanking when this team has succeeded so much because of it? Well, in, in, in part res, uh, as a response to what the strategy that the 76ers undertook, we changed the draft lottery. And now so beginning next year, the odds of getting the first pick if you're the worst performing team move from 25% to 14%. Mm. But it's a bit bedeviling. I mean, it's the, it'll be the sixth time since in the last roughly 35 years that we changed the odds of the draft lottery. And roughly 35 years ago, the league put in place a draft lottery precisely to deal with this strategy. But teams have now taken it to a new level. And it used to be something rebuilding was done over maybe a season. It wasn't a multiple season process. Right. And of course, as you said, now it's being celebrated. So I, I, I am worried that even with the change coming next year, it won't do enough. And, it, and it's interesting, it, there, a lot of teams are conflicted as well because they're, they'll be, you know, trying their best to, to win games, and even their fans, and even the media in their market will be saying, what are you doing? That's not yep. the best strategy. You should be breaking down your team completely. So, look, in, in European soccer, they use relegation right. to, yeah, to, to deal with the issue. But on the other, well, but we want to have a closed league. I think the, the, the notion, I think the Suns were the, were, had the worst record in the league this year. The idea that they then would move to the G League, I think, doesn't quite make sense. In part, you've got to make arena investments, you've got player contracts and everything, everything else. And so that, that creates its own issues. On the other hand, you, the, per, the very purpose of a draft is to restock your worst performing teams. They're just not supposed to be worst performing by design. Right. So we got work to do. This is not just your problem. I had Rob Manfred here last week talking about the same thing. The Cubs did it, and they won the World Series. The Astros did it, hmm. and they won the World Series. So Which you means other teams will follow. Yeah, exactly, because it works, because there is incentive to lose. So there's two different ways to look at it, I would think. One of them is try to continue to remove the incentives to lose, and that's what you're trying to do, and I'm sure will continue. Is there another side of it, which is further incentivizing winning? Are there potentially collective bargaining uh, agreement uh, provisions you could put in where if a team makes the playoffs, they get a little more salary cap money or they get a little bigger cut of the playoff money or something like that. Rather than just looking at what happens to teams when they lose, further incentivizing winning. Yeah, that's a great point. So in, in addition to relegation, and then I'll move off relegation that they have I mean, I like it. in, for you. example, the, the English Premier League, the, the national television money is just distributed based on wins. So the champion gets the most money and then all the way down. And so there's a huge financial incentive to win as well. In our league, you get, regardless of whether you even make the playoffs, all 30 teams get the exact same share of our national and international television mm. money. So there's a bit of a so-called free rider issue as well by, by, by you know, not putting the best perform putting your best performance forward, right. you're still getting, the, the financial incentive isn't there other than in your local market. And it used to be in the case, one of the hindrances to undergoing the strategy was fans would stop supporting the team in the market. Now it's the opposite. Again, I was in Philly last Saturday night for the game and it's truly being celebrated. And I got a lot of fans saying, look, <laughs> we told you. And, but <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. Cool. But, but let me say one other thing about the 76ers. And I think Brian Colangelo is not getting enough credit because you know, and, and it, it, of course, it was great to see Embiid back on the floor last night, and it's amazing what Simmons is doing. But look at what J.J. Redick is doing. Look at Ilya Sova, you know, Bellinelli. I mean, they brought in some strong veteran leadership, and so that's necessary, too. It can't just be about the young guys. And, Adam, you know that it's, 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 you can bring in those role players, however, when you're able to acquire the franchise-level players via tanking, which they were able to do with Embiid and Saric and, obviously, Ben Simmons. But since it is playoff time, and the Golden State Warriors and the Houston Rockets seem to be the best teams in basketball. There was a lot of talk about having a 1 through 16 playoff seeding or the top eight teams from each conference facing one another. What do you think about that? So we keep looking at it. I like the concept, especially in this day and age. I think the conferences are not as relevant as, as they once were. The issue, again, is travel in that right now we play an unbalanced schedule. So teams in the East play each other more than they play teams in the West. 
I think if we seeded one through 16, we would have to have a balanced national schedule, which means, so first of all, in the regular season, teams could travel up to 50% more. And as you know, we just added a, a full week to right. the season this past year so that there'd be more time between games. We reduced four games out of five nights, reduced the number of back-to-backs, and it will go the opposite direction. And, and the one thing we know about injuries, that there is a direct correlation with fatigue, tra and fatigue comes from traveling through multiple time zones, et cetera. Then when you get to the playoffs, same issue. Right now, of course, East is playing East. Once you open it up one through 16, you're going to be looking at Portland, Miami series, crisscrossing the country throughout the playoffs. So the obstacle is travel right now. I think in concept, I like the one through 16. I don't think we're just standing on tradition, I, although some people say we should. I think I can get past that. But we haven't been able to solve the problem. Now, maybe we could look at changing the whole way we lay out our schedule, maybe use more time so that, so that there is more opportunity for travel during the playoffs. So it's something we keep looking at. And the flip side of it is that this stuff is cyclical. For a while now, it has felt as though the West was vastly superior. I think that's changing right before our eyes. I'm not sure that as soon as next year, the Eastern Conference playoffs won't be more difficult to navigate than the West. So we'll see. And, and just I'll add, the other thing you could potentially do is reseed at the conference finals. You know, and that deals if your two best teams are in the same conference. So, I mean, there, there are some other approaches to, to deal yeah, with. Yeah, they I'm sure you want the two best teams to meet. Yeah, I mean, it did work out this year. What, Cavs had three days off between game one and game two? I mean, I suppose there is a way if the traveling isn't, in fact, such a big deal. But let's be honest, they're flying nice planes and nice. I mean, it can't be but that But the reseeding throughout the playoffs is a really good idea yeah. as well. Yeah, that's something we could look at. But the travel, I mean, despite the nice planes. I mean, I, <laughs> I've seen it. I, you guys all travel, too. I mean, it, it's... It's the lack of sleep, and it, despite the nice plane, especially when you're going across the country and it sc screws up your sleep cycle, and we're learning a lot more about it, it really does lead to more injuries. Now, they've talked a lot at, at the Final Four. We'll hear that conversation sometimes about reseeding when you get down to the last four teams. Right. So it is an interesting right. concept.